Good day, folks. We'll get started in about a minute. Okay. Welcome everybody. Let's see. Share. Uh, update. Yes. Okay. And Copied the wrong thing. <laughs> Come on. Copy. There we go. Link address. Okay. There's the link for today's meeting. Welcome. Uh, this is the let me make sure I'm not muted here. Yep, this is the Aries Did Come V2 working group, uh, March 20th. Um, I should remind you of the Hyperledger antitrust policy, uh, as well as the Hyperledger code of conduct. Um, so far on the agenda, we have the IAW, um, April 2023. We'll definitely talk about that. Um, we might get to AIP3, but we'll see. IAW uh, is kind of the big focus, um, although we're open uh, if there's other things, uh, especially timely things that we need to cover. Anything that we want to add today? Quiet. Okay. No worries. Uh, yep. Thank you for adding yourselves to attendees. If you'd like, uh, you know, welcome to do that. Uh, is there anyone new who'd like to introduce themselves as well today? Okay. Well, I didn't introduce myself. I'm Lance from Roots ID, and uh, yeah, we host this meeting weekly uh, on Mondays. And uh, we're about a month out from the April IIW conference uh, in Mountain View, California, and we're hoping that there'll be some a decent interopathon and just showing in general of DICOM V2, uh, and especially it would be nice to see it. Um, there's there's adoption happening. Uh, I know quite a bit of effort in on the Occupy side and the AFJ side uh, within Aries, so. That's exciting. 
uh, and we'll see what, what comes out of that uh, for the meeting. Uh, any quick updates for things that happened uh, for the Aries Working Group? Or, yeah, Occupy or AFJ or anything else uh, that people know of? Hopefully, hopefully I can find a way that I'll uh, I can get everyone engaged today. <laughs> I'm a good host. Uh, then I then I will. If anyone has been talking, uh, I haven't heard anything from anybody, so you're on mute. But uh, yeah, let's see. Okay, uh, was this left over or uh, so Thomas? Uh, yeah, hi. Hey. Oh, hey. Let's see, my headphones are, uh, I'm not hearing you through my headphones. Give me one second. <laughs> okay, now I think you're in my headphones. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you yeah, sound okay. Okay, maybe, maybe I sound better too or worse. I'm not sure. Uh, you sound great. Thank you. All right. So are we uh, we are, are you ready to talk Nessus uh, Didcom stuff today? Yeah, if you if you like, of course. Um, Great. Um, you can't see me, can you? I cannot see you. You know, it looks uh, uh, just a black screen. Yeah. Um, I don't know how to fix this. Okay. No worries. Let's um, maybe do a, a, a little bigger oh. introduction for IW as well, I guess, um, before you get started. So um, Thomas and, oh, there you are. Hey. Yeah. Uh, hey. And, and uh, let's see, several. We have, uh, let's see, we made a list somewhere. Um, yeah. Should be. Hello. Hello. Hi, Brian. Hello. Hey, Rodo. How are you? Hey, good. Good. Uh, I'm trying to remember where where I posted my list. <laughs> Sorry, folks. It's Monday. Uh, I'll, I'll get on my game here. Um, but basically, yeah, we have a list of potential participants uh, for IW for an interopathon for Didcom V2. Uh, so we want to um, possibly do a video recording of any type of um, Didcom V2 interop type things between our agents um, or services or or whatever it is that you have that that's Didcom V2 related uh, mediators and things like that. Um, but a bunch of us will be at IIW or or we can kind of carry uh, the message uh, and, and, and demonstrations uh, to IIW for, for those who won't be there. So um, we're hoping over the next month to rally those efforts uh, as best as possible um, so that Didcom V2, let's say at the last IIW, Didcom V2 was more of a, uh, you know, tiny, uh, uh, there was a lot of discussion, but but in terms of demonstration, Roots ID did some things. There was an attempt at some interopathon, but it was uh, you know had had varying levels of success. But most of it was fairly introductory. We're hoping to show kind of a, a wider ecosystem um, at this IAW. So <clears throat> that's that's the intention. Uh, hopefully, that's exciting for everybody. And uh, yeah, we'd like to hear from anybody in terms of updates uh, on their. Um, uh, progress. Um, certainly, Roots ID. Uh, we're doing right now a, a nice integration with uh, the Ramo agent. Um, Alex is is working on a, a bunch of that, um, and then obviously we want to show interop with groups uh, or or agents like what Thomas is uh, building and, and going to talk about today. Um, I think uh, Rodolfo just did uh, a small, well, two, actually two significant integration or interops um, with Block Trust, um, Bjorn Sandler. Correct, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you, you, you want to talk about that? Oh, Bjorn, Bjorn is showing me, so I think. Oh, oh good. I <laughs> He's the best. Oh, he's here. To yes. tell, I think. Good. Okay, <laughs> Bjorn, you want to talk about that just a little bit? <laughs> well, <I'm sorry. laughs> what should I talk about? <laughs> uh, 
Just mute muting uh, you mute lungs. Sorry, uh, you have a mediator, uh, correct, Bjorn? Yeah, I do have a mediator. Great. Uh, <clears throat> it's essentially more or less the same as yours. A uh, few, um, um, few, uh, few less features, like I don't have the action menu and uh, the question answer protocol, um, but the rest is implemented in, and it's all in .NET. Great. That's excellent. And uh, is that going to be just a live mediator that anyone can yeah, uh, connect course. to? Okay, yeah. great. Let's um let's post those. Uh, I was still hoping my my mind would uh hold on. Let me check my hack MD here and see what I have. Yeah, and Bjorn not, not only have a mediator, he has also a it's a browser wallet. So we call that way, Bjorn. It's... Yeah, it's a it's a, a browser wallet uh, which is capable of um, Ditcom. Yeah, so was that the, the I saw that, and this is great. And we tested with Roots Wallet, and so we are able to send message. Well, at least to the mediator, I tested and send message to the mediator, the block trust mediator. And receive it back in another uh, root wallet on another mediator. So I think it's mostly all working. Need to fix some details. Uh, I see a problem with the. So bo both are you. We are using Sigma libraries. Um, uh, I'm... Roots... <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. So so the problem could be uh, potentially also in my um port so i took the uh, sigpa jvm library and ported it over uh, through uh, to .NET. and um <clears throat> since um this wasn't so straightforward since a lot of my libraries were missing like i hadn't i am using a different crypto library bouncy castle and i don't had uh, uh jose uh, so uh, the, the JSON library stuff. So I also had to, to rewrite this. And so there are many components where potentially there could be uh, problems, but all the tests from the JVM, I ported them also over to .NET and they are all passing. So there might be problems, but um, most likely not so obvious ones. Yeah. <laughs> So, yeah. so then our, our goal over this next month uh, and, you know, as soon as possible, obviously, is to essentially have interactions occur between, uh, you know, our agents and Bjorn's uh, so that he can, you know, uh, well, we can discover incompatibilities uh, and that might be, mean fixes on, on our side or, or Bjorn's side uh, or both. And so... Yeah, this is really exciting, uh, and 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 this all goes with the movement that's happening in Diff as well, where you know Diff Didcom group. Basically, we want to show as many live agents, uh, live Didcom things as possible, um, just so that the ecosystem can, you know, really bootstrap here, I guess. Uh, and so, yeah, exciting, good. Um, can you give me any links, uh, Bjorn? Yeah, or... I posted the link to the mediator in the chat. Oh, good. Oh, yes, thank and you. I will also post the, the GitHub library. I'm doing a uh, I'm doing an excellent job today of uh, of hosting. <laughs> he posted the link in the chat, and I didn't catch it. All right, uh, very good. So that's for your mediator. So I think. I sh okay, good. Um, I saw also. Uh, Yeah, Thomas. Yeah, Thomas, go ahead. And then uh, Alexandra, I think also I saw your hand at some point. But go ahead, Thomas, and then we'll... we'll... Yeah, I, I was wondering um, if, if you're going to do all these kinds of interop uh, tests and sending messages forth and back, uh, do you think it's possible to, to record th these activities in a way that they can be reused? I know we don't have a test uh, harness, right? Uh, but but I think it's it would be useful to to like uh, repeat what we've done against one agent with another. 
see what I mean. I, so, so, yeah, so when you're saying recording, though, you're saying as like a script that, yeah. that can be rerun multiple times. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, yeah. Very basic stuff, maybe, you know, so 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 the effort doesn't get lost, really. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. Love, so, yeah I love we, that. We don't have it automated yet, but, uh, you know, maybe just maybe just uh you know record the messages or record um the the activities yeah um th thoughts on that because um yeah essentially i think we would all love it if this activity that we're about to go through um results in a test harness we, we've heard from fabio um as well uh, in diff and you know many people have mentioned this um, I think the, this is a, the, the good first step, which is just, okay, let's have, let's do some uh, interactions, um, because I think that the test harness that we define would be like, we want it to be as minimal as possible, as, as agile as possible. So, you know, hey, let's try some things first. Um, but I, I, I love the idea of um, recording these as some scripts that we could reference uh, if, if a, a test harness effort were to uh, to happen. But thoughts from others? Yeah, if, if if you don't if you don't record the actual messages, then I think it's already useful if you record uh, what you're testing, right? So so Rudo says we we send a message to the mediator and got it back. You know what type of message? You know what what was the what was the intention of this uh, exercise? And and it could be you know it could be in plain text. Uh, but so that we don't forget that we we try to we try to test this and and then I can look at it and and try to test this as well against uh, another agent and then from that we we get more complex and more you know descriptive and so on and so on and it, eventually this will be automated of course but not just yet. So maybe from my experience building the mediator and the agent, um, <clears throat> I used um, the mediator from Ruth's wallet and they have a very nice um, Jupyter notebook describing a basic example of Alice and Bob, uh, which um, sent a message to each other. And what I did, I ran through this uh, example and then at some point I put in my mediator and my client and so that was my process to confirm that it at least should work. I mean it's not perfect, it's not really a script, but it, at least it's some code and you see how the message are structured. That's great. Um... Um, well, uh, Roto, can you post the Jupyter Notebook um, link for that? Oh, yeah, 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 that'd be yeah, great. Perfect. And then, um, yeah, so more thoughts on how do we record those interactions um, so that we can learn from them. So, you know, Bjorn did, did his uh, interactions. I mean, the Jupyter Notebook obviously is a, is a great way to I guess script um, the the interaction. Um, yeah, more thoughts on on actually recording what messages were passed, what errors uh, we get. Did, does each agent should each agent kind of have a a page that they build or a Jupyter notebook themselves that they build? I'm I'm, I'm open to thoughts here. Darn, I thought I thought <laughs> I, was, I was hoping it, the answer was obvious. I just didn't have it. <laughs> I, I don't want to throw a damper on it. Uh, uh, hello, everyone. Sorry, I missed last week. Hey, Bruce. Um, but um, I personally am uh, almost ashamed to admit that I don't know anything at all about Python, the most popular programming language in the world. And I'm hoping that we can do something that doesn't require me to come up to speed. Yeah, no, that's fair for sure. Um, 
I don't think that Jupiter's only Python, but uh, yeah, certainly just interacting, yeah. uh, you know, without a Jupyter notebook is also totally fine. You know, more than anything, we'll say base level is just participation for sure. Um, and, and Python is popular because it's so simple. <laughs> so it's yeah. easy to read. You can read as a, like, as a pseudo code. <laughs> so if, even if you don't want to run it, execute it, you can read it and understand. Yeah, that's like a really basic. good point. <laughs> yeah, Bruce, have you, have you ever looked at a Jupyter Notebook, for instance? Uh, I don't believe that I have. So yeah, if, I, I if think there's as a, a link shared, I will, I will look at it. Yeah, as a developer, reading a Jupyter Notebook usually is it's almost equivalent to just reading an article about something because uh, it's it you know it supports uh, Markdown, but then it also shows you the code cells that you're running, and usually you have some some Markdown associated with the cell telling you what's going on, and then um, yeah, so you know with our minds uh, being you know the computer scientists or, or programmers that we are, then. You know, it just is uh, feels fairly natural. So, um, okay, thank you. I, I will give you a test of that. <laughs> yes, good. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Uh, all right. Any other thoughts? Or, or also, um, I said, Alexandra, uh, I wanted to make sure we caught your thoughts. Uh, let's see. You said in the chat as definite answer, and DCO will be interested in participating in the demo. Great. I'm not directly involved with that, but I know we're getting something organized. Awesome. Confirmed by Sam Kern and our mobile team. Fantastic. And then, uh, Alexandra, will you be at IAW? I know uh, you should... No, I'm sorry. I'm more of a just like I attend these meetings because they're doing other things, and then I report back to stuff I'm not very knowledgeable <laughs> about. So. I see. Okay. Fair enough. Well, uh, yeah, that's very good. Thank you for the info. Neither I nor the nor Phil's students will be attending in April. I'm sure Phil oh. will be there. Okay. But, uh, okay. I ho I hope to be there in uh, the fall meeting. Okay. So, um, at the very least, also, uh, it would be amazing if we could have some video uh, interactions. Um, um, I know that's, you know, we, it's something, right? And and it it would be nice to carry you know, Bruce and Phil and the students into IW, you know, they, everybody, obviously people know you, uh, it, it would just be nice to carry that, um, that occurrence. If, you know, if we do have some form of, of interop and interaction prior to IW, it'd be great to just have a quick video, you know, saying, uh, you know, here's the students, it's BYU, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Here's the students at BYU from Pico Labs, uh, or you know, however, and you know, they're doing Didcom V2 as well. That would that would be quite interesting. The reason the students aren't attending is that IAW falls on their last day of classes, their one day to study, and the first day of examinations. Yeah, <laughs> and so they wouldn't they won't be able to do anything uh, during that during yeah. that time. Totally fair. Okay, cool. And the uh, one one other thing that I wanted to say is, um, you know, we can do some of those interactions here uh, as as we uh, you know grow. So so R Rodo for, and Bjorn, for instance, did did it offline. Um, but I still think that everybody can learn and possibly you know the recording. Obviously, we get a recording from this meeting. So um, uh, I think, and just as us as a community here, uh, you know, we can grow a lot over the next month by just um, doing some interactions live. So, uh, you know, nobody's on the spot for today, but um, let's say that the all the meetings following this, I think we have three maybe uh, after this until IW. Let's say that those meetings are, we're going to just dedicate it to uh, interacting. Uh, and then, you know, asking questions, talking about, you know, why we're getting errors, how do we document this stuff, how are we ever going to, you know, uh, put it into a test harness, uh, you know, like a minimal test harness that's that's easy for all of us to use, and just, you know, really capitalize on this next three weeks. Any other thoughts on, on that? So I, I will take it as an, uh, as an assignment then to to get the student's code running on my machine so that I can represent them. Uh, this, this meeting occurs too early in the morning for students uh, here for some reason. <laughs> right. Yes. 
I wonder if we can, um, if they if they would be interested in attending the DIF DIDCOM. Uh, so so this meeting was nice to create because uh, the DIF DIDCOM meetings are usually too late for like European uh, attendees. So I wonder if um, getting them to come to the DIF DIDCOM meeting. You know, I understand students that might be tough. They're busy, but <laughs> <laughs> anyways, <laughs> yeah, we could uh, possibly. Yeah, go ahead. I, I think it would be a good idea to uh, to organize somehow, uh, and I, I know it's hard to coordinate when you don't have the actual parties in the conversation. But if we could coordinate one or two interrupt sessions out of band with respect to this meeting, yeah. That's where I think the Jupyter notebooks will become very oh, okay. useful because then that's kind of giving you a script that you can follow along with. And, you know, um, we could, you know, create a variety of Jupyter notebooks depending on the type of uh, service that we're interacting with just to, you know, you know, oh, okay, if, if the only thing that you can do is, uh, is a basic message, you know, fine, right? But uh, if we do something a little, uh, a little more advanced, like, uh, you know, uh, discover features or something like that. Uh, anyways, um, or we could just write it down, right? It doesn't have to be some kind of formal Jupyter notebook, so. Yeah, I, I appreciate Thomas's suggestion that, that we do this in a scientific way and that we have laboratory notebooks of, so that we're recording what our experiments were and what the outcomes were. I think that's yeah. very valuable. Yeah. Okay. Uh, any other thoughts on that stuff before I think Tom's going to show us a bunch of new stuff that he's done? <clears throat> okay. All right. Well, we'll uh, yeah, Thomas, go for it. What uh, we I, I've seen a ton of activity uh, coming coming from you, which is very exciting. Yeah. Okay. So let's set the stage. Uh, we meet um, a, a bunch of people. We have Malati, who is a mother of a young child, and she's married to Rayesh, and uh, they have a baby son, Anand. And uh, Malati wants to travel to the US. And so she takes her uh, digital passport to the airport and he, she has the birth certificate for her son. And uh, at the airport, she needs to prove uh, that she is actually the mother of, of that child. She needs to prove that she is married to uh, the father of the child. And finally, the father has to give permission uh, for the mother to leave the country for a certain amount of time and and to a certain destination. And, and this is a, a use case uh, which has been described in the uh, W3C document, which I post in the chat, which is this one. Right. So if you if you like to, to read along. So, so this is this is the use case. Okay, so let's do this now. Uh, I share the screen. Okay, yeah, I'll uh, stop sharing. Okay. And... Right. Um, can you see? Not yet. Okay, so it asked me to leave the meeting. Maybe I have to do this. Hmm. Uh, I had to change some system permissions, so maybe share. So how about this? Can yes, you... better now. Yeah, better now. Okay, so so this is the whole screen, and but we will focus on on this thing here. Uh, let me see if I can. How do I do this? I share. Maybe. Maybe I share. So now just this screen here. So how about this? You should see a command yeah. line interface, right? So, That's okay, good. yeah, we've seen this before. Uh, I type, it did come, so it comes up with the latest release from today. And last time we saw this, we created a bunch of, uh, of wallets uh, and we created dids and then we, we used out of band uh, communication and, and so on and so on. 
And today we'll be focusing on, on the verifiable credentials present. So we will issue credentials, we will uh, present them, we will verify them, and um, we will use um, the open policy agent to uh, verify these. And let me just um, post that as well, because that may be interesting as well. Okay, so so let's do this. And because we've, we've, we've seen much of it already, I fast forward. And so what you see here uh, is, well, the first new feature is that you can run the CLI with an initial script. So it supports scripting. So if you do a bunch of things, you don't have to repeat them all again. So for now, I I run the script, uh, travel with, with minor uh, demo one. So this created uh, a number of wallets. So we have a government, we have a hospital, we have an airport, we have the mother, the father, and we have the child we don't have yet. So let's create the child. So we go wallet, create, and the child's name is Anand. Okay, so what we also have, so we can, we can look at the list of wallets that we have here. Uh, what's also new, uh, we had these fuzzy selectors, yeah? So we could select wallets by name, by ID, and so on and so on. And now we can also select them by index if we want to. So we can we can say wallet show, and we say, I want to, want to see the wallet of the child, and I want to do this verbosely, and there it is, right? So uh, do we have dits already? Uh, Anand does not have a did. Do we have do we have dids for for wallet wallet um, uh, Malati? Yes, we do. Right. So dids are associated uh, with the wallet. You see on on the right hand side, you see the context did that we are currently operating on. So the the child does not have a did yet. Uh, we create a did for the child. It is the child is the context wallet you see on the bottom left. So we create uh, a did. If, if we don't say anything here, uh, it will create a did key. But because this is the demo that built on top of the previous one, we do something more fancy. Um, do I want to do this right now? Oh, I'm not sure. So I, I create a did peer and I could also say uh, this wants to be num algo two, right? Okay, so this didn't work, I'm sorry. So let's just create did key. Okay, let's just create did key. So, okay, now we have dids and we have wallets for all of them. And now let's look at the first, um, let's look at the first, let's issue a credential. Right, so we look at commands and there we see, here's the verify cred credential thing we can issue, we can present, we can verify. We can look at the policies for verification. We have templates and, and so on. So first thing we need to familiarize ourselves with what types of credentials we can actually issue. And uh, we go uh, verifiable credential template lists. Okay, so these are the templates that we can actually use uh, for for creating um, verifiable credentials. Um, the CLI does not work with schema just yet. So the process is to start with, with a template. Let's look at the passport perhaps. Yeah, template show three. So this is, here we see the subject of is a very basic passport. So we need a we need a date, we need a given name and a family name, and we need a citizenship. And the values that you see here, they are examples, right? So so when you look at a template, it gives you an idea of of what um, the content should be. Yeah, you can also look in the, at the template in a verbose manner, and then you see the entire verifiable credential. So this is the format from, from the W3C specification, right? So we have a type, a context, we have an issuer, an issuance date, an expiration date, uh, 
and a credential schema. Yeah. So the credential schema is um, is currently baked into this thing, right? So I could equally have uh, pointed to to GitHub to look at the schema, but the path that I that I went for this is I used the template and then I used some online tool uh, to create the uh, JSON schema for such a template, right? Okay, so now we can start issuing uh, our first credential. We say um, verifiable credential issue code completion uh, and we need a template. So in this case, we want to use, we want to create a verifiable credential for a passport. And we need to say, um, what is the issuer and what is the subject? So for this, if, if I type help here, yeah, it tells me that uh, the issuer, it needs, to, it needs to be a did and the holder needs to be a did and the subject as well. And because I can't remember, you know, all these, dids that I created up here, uh, if, if you look carefully, what's also new is if, if we create a did, uh, then it is put into um, a session variable, right? So we, we can use these session variables instead of the actual dids to, de uh, to reference them, yeah? And if we want to know what variables are available, then here it is. Right, so because I ran the initial script, the initial script uh, created the wallets, and for each wallet, it created a, a did. In this case, a did key for every wallet, and now I can use um, these aliases for for these these dids to actually issue the verifiable credential. So I try this again. So I do issue template pass. I'm not sure if this needs to be case sensitive, just in case. So passports are usually issued by the government. So I say government, is this, this one here, yeah? Government, I want to use the government did. Yeah, I could also have pasted the actual date, of course, yeah? But in this case, it's easier to, it just reads uh, more nicely, right? And and then I say subject, right? So I want to issue a passport. The government is the issuer. Uh, Malati is the subject. She is also the holder, so I don't need to uh, specify the holder explicitly. There's a case where uh, the credential subject is not the same as as the holder. So for example, for the baby, right? So the baby doesn't have a digital wallet. Malati is the holder. The baby is the is the subject. So I do this and it worked kind of, right? So it, it didn't actually work because what it did is it tried to issue a credential for type passport. Uh, but as I said earlier, the passport templates only contains example data, right? So it won't allow you, it, it won't allow you to issue um, a, a credential without the actual data you want to pass in, of course, right? So, and and these error messages, they come from the schema, yeah? So this is defined in the schema. Uh, the, the schema requires a given name, a family name, and a citizenship, right? So, so I, stuff is missing, yeah? So actually the data thing is missing, right? So, but I won't do this. I won't type this here, so it, it would be a, a bunch of case, uh, JSON. What is also supported is I can paste this in as a multi-line command, right? So I could have typed this in, yeah, with dash dash data and then use this JSON, but you know, usually I would have this somewhere, um, you know, stored because these credential subjects can get very complex and big, so it's it's not you know, very convenient if I if I always have to type it into CLI. So I could have dereferenced the file, a URL, et cetera, et cetera, right? So in this case, um, the the credential is issued and it's also 
assigned to a context variable. In this case, uh, the context variable is derived from what I actually did. And it says uh, holder dot type dot verifiable credential, right? So if I, if I look at the list again, right? So I have now two more uh, variables. Uh, they are sorted by, uh, uh, you know, in, in alphanumeric order. <clears throat> and I can now look at, excuse me, <clears throat> I can now look at um, that credential. So I can say um, a variable show, well, no, we do something else. We, we switch to Malati's wallet. Right, so now, now we are working with Malatis wallet, and and in Malatis wallet, I can say verifiable credential list. Okay, there there it is. Yeah, so by issuing a credential, this version of the software does not actually send um, the credential across the wire to that other wallet, but for this demo, we work with you know all wallets. Um, are multi-tenant in this system. And if we issue a credential to a holder, the holder wallet automatically receives that, that credential. And the actual sending across the wire is something that, that builds on top of this and comes later. So let's look at, at this thing. So we have the verifiable credential, we can show it. Uh, we can reference this just by index and we can say verbosely, no. It's not needed. Here we here we go. So so this is the the credential we just issued. Malat, Yahamal, and, and so on and so on and so on, right? So here we have it's signed, you know, uh, it's signed by by the government and Malati holds this. And I would repeat I would re repeat this step um, now also for the birth certificate. And I would uh, repeat it for the marriage certificate. And I would also repeat it for the travel permission uh, from the father to the mother. Uh, but I don't think I, I want to you know, waste your time in doing this. And I would suggest we, we fast forward again. And in this case, we issue all the wallets. And then we do this again and run another script, which I also prepared, um, this one here. And there you go, right? So it now issued, it issued passports uh, for Malati. Let me show you this here, maybe, maybe. Uh, let me point you to to the scripts that I actually ran. Right. Okay. Now I have it. So if you want to look at those scripts, they're there. And um, I I should now have I should now have there you go. I, sh I should now have all these verifiable credentials issued. So Malati holds the birth certificate. I can also, the, the JSON of, of the actual uh, verifiable credential is also stored in a, um, in a session variable. So I can dereference it like this. Um, then there's the marriage certificate. So the marriage certificate says, let's look at this real quick. So let's switch the wallet again to, to Malati. And let's look at the verifiable credentials that she actually holds. So here we see she holds the pass, her path, passport, a birth certificate, a marriage certificate, and, and a travel permission. And perhaps let's, let's look at this real quick. So we, let's show the verifiable credential number one. So this is the, uh, this is the, where do I see that? Um, oh yeah, so this is the birth certificate. So the type of the verifiable credential is birth certificate. And the subject um, 
the subject is, is it's rather complex, right? The subject is of course the baby of the baby as a person. Uh, these types are taken from schema.org, right? So all the attribute names, they are like very common or pseudo standard um, properties in schema that, that are used in the context, in this case of a natural person, right? So birth, birthplace is, is pseudo standard uh, property name for a birthplace, right? And the type is a hospital that's also, you know, already defined, it has an address. And here we have an array of parents, right? So in this case, two parents, and we see that Malati and Hamal, uh, Malati and Rayesh are the, are the parents for Anat. Born uh, 29th of March, 2022. Exactly 105 years later than my granddad, so let's look at these again. Marriage certificate is, uh, perhaps the travel permission is, is interesting. So we show three and, and here the travel permission is trivial, right? So it says, it says um, the, the subject ID is that of the child and the guardian is the ID of the mother and the father gives permission for the mother to take the child to Canada in this in this case, right? So now we now that we have those verifiable credentials, uh, we need to present it to the airport. So Malati takes all these these credentials, uh, four of them. She takes along her passport, her birth certificate, her marriage certificate, and the travel permissions, right? And the way to do this is we say like this, yeah, we say verifiable credential present, the holder is Malati, um, the verifier is the airport. I use a Y because uh, V is already taken for verbose, right? So, so the Y looks similar to, to V, so it's, it's um, Y for verifier. Uh, and then uh, I want to present the passport from Malati. And I do this verbosely and there you go. So this is the, um, this is the presentation that has just been created, right? So this is a, um, a W3C verifiable credential of type verifiable presentation. And there we see uh, an array of verifiable credentials. And this is the passport credential that is, you know, that we've seen before, the passport credential for uh, Malati. And here's the proof, cryptograph, uh, cryptographic proof uh, for, for this credential in JSON LD. And we do this for, we do this for the birth certificate and the marriage certificate and the travel certificate. And so let's let's do these real quick. I'll paste those in here, not verbosely. Yeah, so it just uh, happens and Malati. And in this case, yeah, the airport now holds, holds these. So presenting a verifiable credential to the airport uh, makes the airport the owner of of these uh, credentials. So in this case, we could switch to the airport and have a look. There you go, right? So so the airport actually holds these uh, four verifiable presentations that now need to be verified. And now we come to the last so the, the final bit, and this is perhaps the most interesting bit, um, how, how, the, how the airport actually verifies those, right? So let's do a very simple type of verification. So again, we, we, use, we use, as you see, it's getting bigger, right? Lots of data now in here. So we have the verifiable credentials and we have the verifiable presentations, right, in, in here. Um, 
and airport is is because it starts with an A, you know, it's, it's all the airport stuff comes first. And the airport now does the first verification for, and in this case, I reference the JSON of, of the verifiable presentation directly uh, from those system variables, right? I could, again, you know, this could be pointing to URL where, where the presentation comes from. It could be pointing indexed to, to the airport's wallet. It could, it could be a file path. In this case, it, it dereferences those um, variables here, right? So, and what we need to do as well is verification of, of a credential or a presentation um, requires a number of policies that we want to apply, right? So, so there's no verification without a policy doesn't make sense, right? It will always pass, right? So I think it will always pass. It might also always fail if a, if a policy is missing. I've never tried this, but let's give it a policy. So we want at least, right? We want to at least have this compliant with the schema policy, right? So we do not want to accept um, a verifiable credential or a presentation that does not pass this policy, right? Okay, so in this case, uh, the airport examines um, the verifiable presentation in this case and checks that the credential contained in the presentation actually complies to the JSON schema that the credential references, right? And, and here we see a list of, of policies that we applied uh, to the verifiable presentation. And in this case, the list is very small. It's just one policy. Uh, it's the JSON schema policy and that passed. And therefore the overall outcome of verification is also true. So in this case, um, the airport knows that Malati actually presented her passport and the passport data is being verified and the passport has been issued by the government. This has happened so far. But this is not enough for, for the airport. Um, the airport also wants to verify that the signature, so the presentation is actually has actually been signed by the entity that holds the presentation. So in this case, we, uh, we verify the JSON schema and we verify the signature, right? So it, this is the most basic type of, of verification. We always want to verify the schema. We also always want to verify the signature, I think. And this is what the airport now does, right? So now it's getting more interesting. Uh, the airport verifies the second type of uh, the second type of um, presentation, uh, the signature policy, right? Okay, but now we do something else. We say uh, we want this and it's not do this schema and signature again, but let's do something more um, fancy. Let's apply a dynamic policy. So a dynamic policy, a dynamic policy is not just the name of the policy, because as the name suggests, it's it's dynamic. And uh, a policy, a, a gen generally, a policy can have um, arguments. So in this case, our dynamic policy has a number of arguments, namely what this policy should actually verify, input data. So it wants to verify um, the, what are we verifying? We're verifying the, the marriage certificate. And the marriage certificate has, has two, you know, uh, two players, two, two spouses. And there's the first one and the second one. And we want to verify that the first one 
is the idea of, of Malati and the second one is the idea of Rayesh. So this is already quite complex. So it goes into it goes into the uh, verifiable credential. It and what we're giving here is um, oh yeah, what what you what we see here is is dollar curly brackets and then the reference to a system variable. So this expands to the actual dits right of Malati and Rajesh, and then we say, and then we say we want to pass in. We want to pass in um, the open policy agent uh, rego file. Um, which I I think I should show you as well. Um, so let's do this real quick. Um, where do I have them? I, I have them. Right. So I have them here. So these these are the Rego files. Oh, perhaps I can just paste it in here. So in this case, the Rego file looks like this. And we have about two minutes, just so you know, Thomas. Yeah, I'm I'm done almost. Yeah, right. it's great. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, so keep this it up. is <laughs> so so this is this is the if if you look at at the open policy. Rego language, it's very, very powerful. And I'm by no means an, an expert in this. So it generally allows you uh, to separate policy from, from data. So you can use the Rego language uh, to, to match your policy with the structured, any structured data. And the outcome is usually a Boolean. This verifies or this doesn't verify. Right, so in this case, we switch to the other thing here. So when we shoot this one, it fails and this is likely, let's try this again. Maybe I did a typo. Oh. Oh, this is no good. This is no good. I I don't know why why this why this is now failing. Uh, this is oh. This is a typo in one of my copies of of what i actually did so here what i did here last so this is probably also something uh so what i did here last is i executed the cli with the whole script right so this is the complete demo of creating the wallets, creating the dits, issuing all the verifiable credentials, presenting all the verifiable credentials, and finally uh, verifying those credentials with dynamic policies, right? So if I run the whole lot, this whole demo, what we've done so far, then you will see at the end, hopefully, you will see at the end that the airport actually did verify it did verify the passport with the schema and the signature it did verify the marriage certificate with the dynamic policy and the dynamic policy here you see uh, the marriage certificate it uses malatis did and and Rayesh did and the this is the rego that we actually applied to the in this case and then next step is it verified the birth certificate. The Rego is different. So this Rego verifies that the child is actually, or the child, uh, the child has two parents and one of the parents is the did of Malati and the other did is that of Rayesh. So this is a, a valid uh, verification of a birth certificate so that uh, Malati 
proves that she is actually the mother of that child. And finally, uh, the airport verifies the travel permission from Rayesh. So that means that the travel permission references um, references an, uh, uh, an agent. No, does it say agent? I can't remember. It, it references a, a minor and a, and a guardian. So it verifies that the ID of the minor is actually uh, the did of, of the child and the ID of the guardian is actually the, the did of the mother, right? And ultimately, I have uh, put all those verifiable credentials into a single presentation, yeah? As, as you know, a, a verifiable presentation can reference uh, multiple um, verifiable credentials and the rego to, so I would, the airport would only have to verify one single presentation and the rego uh, would be quite a bit more complex, but it could, it could in fact uh, do this in one step, right? But, but this is something I, I haven't, you know, I haven't completed yet for this demo, but yeah, so yeah. that's it. Yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> Absolutely fantastic. Um... Hopefully this is inspirational for everybody that, uh, you know, I, I don't know if by April uh, IAW that we'll be able to do some interactions uh, similar to this. I mean, obviously we want to start trying, but, uh, you know, maybe six months or, well, seven months from now, uh, you know, we would all be participating in basically showing an ecosystem like this uh, over Didcom V2. Um, at IAW or maybe sooner. Uh, anyways, certainly in these meetings, we can do that. Thomas, uh, amazing work. Uh, quick question uh, from me. I know we're out of time, but um, th between these wallets, is Didcom uh, mm -hmm. uh, happening for, for these presentations and issuances and everything? No, no, okay. it's not. It's, it's not. All, all the wallets so, so the uh, the CLI has multi-tenant wallets, and as I said earlier, you know when you issue when you issue a verifiable credential, and you need to give it to holder, and the holder wallet already you know already receives that verifiable credential sure. automatically and silently, right? Yeah, I, j so, I just didn't know if you were actually behind the scenes also uh, using Didcom in order to you know well, simulate those interactions i i will you know i i will certainly and and what should Great. what could happen from this is is that we now uh hook this up to roots wallet right so we can actually send those yeah we, we send those very fiber credential to roots and then it should be possible in in roots to look at them and uh, roots would then i think would uh create the presentations for it right so so th then we simulate that Malati actually goes to the airport with her Roots wallet and yeah. she presents it. And then and then Roots wallet would send those presentations to Nessus again, which would be the uh, airport endpoint, yeah, backend airport. And we verify this uh, at the airport. And if we want to do the super fancy, then it would only be like one presentation of the required uh, credentials. And we have a more complex rego expression and the airport can do this in one shot, right? And, and we would have a very impressive long list of yada, 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 verified, 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 you're good to go. And then Melati enters the plane with the baby, you know, on her lap and, and all is good. Fantastic. Yeah. Okay, let's pick up uh, where we're leaving off here. And obviously, uh, yeah, uh, please bring your agents, services, and mediators that are DIDCOM uh, enabled. And let's just keep trying to stitch uh, these kind of situations together. Great meeting. Awesome job, Thomas. Thank you so much. We'll see You're you welcome. all Thank uh, you. next week. Yeah. Bye-bye. <clears throat> Thank you, Thomas. Thanks, everyone. You're welcome. Thanks.